speed skating team for the fourth straight time. And I think you're the only woman, the oldest woman. We hate to talk about how old you are. She's only 31 years old. But to make the, the, the women's speed skating team for the Olympics is quite an achievement at age 31. Plus, you just had a baby a year ago. Um, what was involved in you making that decision and for the commitment? I don't know exactly what got me going, but my uh, brother Mike trains for triathlons, mm -hmm. and I started training with him, and I did better as the, year, as the summer went on. And then when September rolled around, I figured I might have a chance for this. So I started training seriously for skating, and uh, my father retired October 6th. We went to Calgary, started training on the ice there, and I started doing better and better. And I, I started to expect myself to make the team. Mm -hmm. And then when I did make it, I made it in the 1,000 meter, and I shocked myself. Did people tell you not to try it at, at, at your age? I mean, uh, that uh, all these young girls, most of the American speed skaters are, what, 20, 21, 22? Yes, that's right. Well, not too many people would say anything, because I, I didn't tell many people, because I wasn't sure myself. <laughs> yeah. You know, I wanted uh -huh. to, you know, start out and see how it went. And as I did better, I started to mention it to a few people, but I didn't say too much to many people. I wanted to see what would happen. Okay, now we have some videotape of you uh, qualifying for the Olympic team, which, of course, the Olympics are uh, six weeks away. This is the 1,000 meters. And, of course, you've been more noted for going for the longer distances. That's right. Uh, I've trained for the longer distances just because I'm a disciplined person person and it uh, always went very well but I s always said to myself too I think I'm a sprinter I really feel I could do a lot better you know if I trained just for that mm -hmm. well I I surprised myself and didn't expect to make this race but I'm really happy about it because I am now going to train just for this race and see how far I can get with it uh, I think I can do possibly better. And you're going to Europe next week to? Be leaving yeah. on Monday. We'll be there for about three weeks and yeah. back. Well, good luck. We'll be watching on television. Let's hope she brings home a medal. But congratulations on just making the team. That's fantastic. Thank you, Johnny. Okay, Nancy Swider. All right, folks. After a break, Schaefer's place. And Calgary less than three weeks away. Do you believe in time flying? Yes. The Chicago area has produced several Olympians, but how about... Someone going to her fourth games. Can you compare time when speed skater Nancy Swider Peltz went to her yeah, first games in 1976, she didn't have the hyphen in her name, a home in Wheaton, or a little Nancy to take care of. Nancy Swider Peltz and family moved into their new house in August, but she's been training hard since so September. I've only been here really August, uh, August and September, and in and out since then, so I've not lived here very long. <laughs> August. Nancy Swider Peltz says she likes domestic chores and can't wait to take them on, but right now she can only simulate floor scrubbing on a makeshift Formica surface used to help her train for the Olympics. The one thing we really haven't done uh, since we've been married uh, two and a half years, and that is we don't, we have a dining room table and we formally have sat down at that table about four times, <laughs> and it's been with company. It hasn't been all hard training since 1976. From 1980 to now, Swider Peltz says she really put in only two years of concentrated effort. Of course, the last few months of training wouldn't have been possible had her father not retired from teaching at Taft High School and helped her out, and her husband hadn't been able to cheer her on. Being an athlete myself and knowing the commitment it takes, the conclusion I came to was if I had a chance to put on my football pads again, uh, that I definitely would, and I would play again myself. Swider Peltz set a record in the 76 games. She believes four Winter Olympic appearances is a U.S. record, and the $1,000 in phone bills over the past few months has got to be a family record. But a mother likes to hear the sound of her baby. I just kept thinking about her and what she was doing and who was taking care of her. I knew she was in good hands. I mean, my dad and my mom and Jeff and my grandparent, and everybody was taking good care of her, but I just, I really missed her. There's a chance Nancy Swider Peltz will be called on to carry the flag for the U.S. team in the opening ceremonies. And though that would be a joy, she'd love to carry an additional responsibility. To be the flag bearer at the Olympics would be a very um, patriotic thing to do. Probably, uh... Although I'd like, to, if I was, I would like to be able to carry baby Nancy on my shoulders. <laughs> I'm the mascot. <laughs> It would be a nice dream fulfilled, but how about the dreams of dog sledders who are trying to the fourth Olympics and hopefully she'll come home with a medal after a disappointing finish in 1984. Mike Adamley has the story. I'm still positive, though, because I, I know I've got it in me. Nancy didn't know it then, but she would earn another chance to display the stuff she was made of. She finished a disappointing 18th in the women's 1,000-meter event at the Winter Games in Yugoslavia, the first Olympic year in two decades in which the entire United States speed skating team did not win a medal. 
For Nancy Swider pelts, however, the competitive fire still burned brightly. And despite giving birth to a beautiful baby girl 13 months ago, she decided to chase her dream again. At age 31, Nancy would try to make the Olympic team for a fourth time. Well, I wasn't even in the consideration because I didn't make the decision to compete until September. And people in my sport knew I was doing it. Uh, they 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 kind of thought I would just because I tried it before, I'd done it three other times and they know that I'm a hard worker and that I would probably do it. Uh, but it was not really a for sure thing until the trials. And when September rolled around, um, I was feeling pretty good having tra trained in triathlons. And I said, I'll give it a shot. Four or five months, no big deal. If I do it, I do it. If I don't, I don't. I finally got myself wound up and in a good shape and it worked. Nancy isn't the first female athlete to combine motherhood with competition, but she does consider herself something of a pioneer. You know, I do feel like a pioneer, um, especially in the sport of skating. Now, we've had other women in our sport who've had kids in speed skating, let's say, but uh, none who have made an Olympic team, and this being four Olympics. So in a way, I do, yet I st still kind of feel in the shadow of some of these other women who have done it first. I wasn't the first one, so I kind of look up to them. In a sport that doesn't receive much in the way of subsidies, it helps to have an added support system. And for Nancy, the chance to skate again in Calgary wouldn't be possible without the love and caring of those near and dear to her. Logistically speaking, uh, having have a baby, there's no way I could have done it without my father going up to Calgary with me. And I couldn't have done it um, without financial support from a friend. And I couldn't have done it without my husband agreeing that I could and wanting to be behind it and a part of it all. No matter what happens this coming month in Canada, Nancy Swider Peltz is already a medal winner. Her perseverance and dedication speak volumes for the Olympic ideal. Mike Adamley for Eyewitness Sports Final. Thank you, Mike. Eyewitness Sports will... This little girl grew up playing all kinds of sports, but what she did best was skate like the wind. She was so fast, in fact, that she made the U.S. Olympic speed skating team in 1976, 1980, and 1984. Good girl! Everybody said, you're a three-time Olympian. You've accomplished so much. But something was missing. You could see it in her face on the off-air home movies that her father made. So, what happened next? Well, this is where the story gets good, right? Yeah. <laughs> First, let me tell you that Nancy Swider of suburban Chicago didn't lose her zest for sports after she retired from Olympic competition. There was still water skiing and canoeing and triathlons to keep her busy. She married Jeff Peltz, a football coach at Wheaton College, yeah. and just over a year ago, they had a baby, little Nancy. Domestic life beckoned. She keeps telling me she's going to sit down and sew curtains. But inside, I didn't feel I'd reached my potential. You see, she hadn't won an Olympic medal. So at 31 years of age, with her body still recovering from a cesarean section, and the 1988 Olympic trials just a few months away, Nancy Swider Peltz started training again. The work was difficult but her progress was encouraging. Good job. I could maybe do it. She thought, and she did, surprising the speed skating world by qualifying for her fourth Winter Olympics. As for the baby of an Olympian, the baby who goes with her to the gym every day, the baby who sometimes breaks her concentration, the baby who sometimes disturbs her routine, is this any way to get ready for the Olympics? I think it's an ideal situation having a husband and a kid with me. <laughs> You can't help but laugh. <laughs> that attitude, that let's make the best of every situation, is why Nancy Swider Peltz doesn't complain much about training in the driving rain of West Allis, Wisconsin. You gotta do it. If you gotta do it, you gotta do it. In this age of high-tech athletes, you wonder, though, how a 31-year-old woman in these conditions, a mother who's still coached by her father, could ever hope to beat the best skaters in the world. What my father and I are doing to determine my programs and all is so primitive compared to what, you know, is being done in East Germany, let's say. But I believe in my father, my, my father believes in me, and I think that's very important when you are working with somebody who you know really believes in you. In late December, Nancy Swider Peltz was tested like she'd never been tested before. She had to go to Europe for three weeks of pre-Olympic competition, and she had to leave her baby at home. I, I stopped every kid on the street, you know, and, and almost started crying because I kept thinking about baby Nancy. She missed the first birthday. 
She missed the first steps. She wondered, like all mothers... Is she missing me? Does she, does she comprehend that I'm gone? It all made for a wonderful homecoming. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> she looks so different. I... Wouldn't it be something if, if somehow an Olympic medal came out of this? Wouldn't it? I want to be very honest about it and um, say that from results and all, no, I don't have good chances for it. But... But this year she's never skated better. She's never been happier. This year, the little girl who wanted it all has it all. And because of that... There is a, an outside chance that I could do something pretty good. Now, wasn't that a nice story, baby Nancy? For today, Mike Leonard, NBC News, Wheaton, Illinois. But the last part is the easy part. <laughs> Amazingly, whatever I have to do for her, though, doesn't seem to get me as tired. I forget about it. My mind is totally off myself when I'm chasing her around. <laughs> Nancy is a strong candidate to win tonight's election and gain the great honor of being selected America's flag carrier. She is the first American speed skater to ever compete in four Olympics, and she's also the only one with a baby running around the track. But Nancy and her incredibly supportive family have been through too much during her long and sometimes difficult career to get their hopes too high. Wait and see if it works out for her. If it doesn't, we're a family that has learned that if you don't win, we still go on. If you don't carry the flag, you still go on. I mean, there's always tomorrow, and there's always uh, new things to conquer, and we try not to let anything get us down. Well, I'm confident that Nancy can win the election. After all, she's from the Chicago area, and Chicagoans have a tradition of knowing how to win elections. No, no, just kidding. We'll have those election results at 10, along with some other Olympic news. There's a Willie Galt press conference going on right now, so we'll have that and everything else coming up in a live report at 10. And, Jim, I wish I could send some of this weather your way, but in the meantime, I'll just enjoy it. In Calgary at the Winter Olympics, Tim Weigel, Channel 7. Well, the bad news tonight is that Wheaton speed skater Nancy Swider Peltz did not get elected to carry the American flag in the opening ceremonies. The vote of the American athletes has been tabulated. It's now unofficial, but apparently the winner was an American freestyle skater whose father passed away 10 days ago, and his teammates, out of sympathy to him, bestowed that honor upon him. Lots of news here at the Olympics, Jim. As you say, the opening day is about uh, a little over a day away, and I can't wait. Live from Calgary, Tim this year proves to be no exception and right now bruce jenner is at an incredible new facility it's the indoor skating oval where a lot of records are expected to be broken bruce there certainly are a lot of records expected to be broken in this facility but with me are two very optimistic people right now first of all mike crow the coach of the u.s speed skating team and beside him is nancy swider peltz who is competing in her fourth olympic games and first mike we'd like to talk to you about first let's talk about the men's side uh we have first nick Tomets. Yep, Nick, uh, last weekend we had the World Sprint Championships and uh, maybe didn't fare so well there, but uh, this is a facility that's really going to suit Nick. He's a low-profile skater, he's got great technique, he's really quick and super in the turn, so he'll really be able to uh, excel here at this facility. He's been training here, feeling great, I think he's really positive this week. All right, then we go over to Dan Jansen. He seems okay. to be the guy on the roll because he just is coming off a World Sprint Championship. Yeah, and Dan's just the kind of guy I think that you like to see on a roll. He's a big, powerful skater. He can really explode, you know, come time the event. Uh, his confidence is really high coming off last week. He won the World Sprints. Uh, his turns and everything were really solid. So uh, we're looking forward to a really good performance from Dan. He's also, with a lot of uh, talk about, he's very highly motivated right now because of some of the problems he's had uh, with his sister. Yeah, um, his sister is, is very ill with uh, uh, leukemia, but she's really been, uh, he's really been able to, uh, uh, to, I think, do well. Uh, that's helped him focus, that helped him to uh, uh, keep what he wants yeah. to do. Nancy? This is your fourth Olympic Games, which I'm a great hero of yours because, I mean, if you can compete, you competed all the way back in 1976 when yes, I competed. Back when you did. <laughs> That's right. But this is your first Olympics as a mom. You just recently had this gorgeous, I mean, I am in love with her daughter, little Nancy. But uh, how is it to have that extra, extra special fan on the sideline? You know what? I'm beginning to be known as the mother of this famous little girl. <laughs> she, I can't believe it. Everybody knows her. She walks through security. Hi, Nancy. Everybody's... Yeah please having her around. This is your fourth Olympic Games. How do you feel? So far, this last week, I think I've felt the best I ever have as far as technical. 
the technical aspect of this concern. I'm skating very well. It's just a matter of my taper going right and everything coming together on that day. And that's the Olympics. What happens on that day? And you have to be there. So I have to wait and see. But right now, I'm very positive and optimistic about my chances personally, you know, with myself. I think I can do very, very well. And if you need any babysitters, I'm ready. Oh, thank you. Nancy and I, did, did, we did very well that day that we, we were out here. She's just a sweet little girl. Uh, Mike, let's go over to uh, the, on the women's side with uh, Bonnie Blair. She's the world record holder in the 500, and uh, she just came off another great performance in Milwaukee. Yeah, she was able to take uh, one first uh, place there in the 500 meter. Um, at that point, she was paired with uh, Krista Rothenberger. Uh, you hope for that kind of matchup in the Olympics, too, because she's a real fierce competitor and a real fighter, and she'll just really go after them, so. And I think with a facility like this, we're going to see some uh, records being broken and some great performances by some great athletes. And uh, best of luck to you, Nance, and best of luck to you, Coach. You got your work cut out for you for the next couple of days. In fact, the 500 is this Sunday at uh, 5 o'clock for the men's, and that's going to be a very, very exciting event. We're looking forward to it. It's going to be very competitive. Joan? All right. Thank